I got an email today and in this video I'm going to read it and answer it. It's a really good email and I think that it might help other people out there. The subject is Understanding Great Math for Computer Science and for my interest. Greeting. I am a high school graduate and somehow have eight months prior to my college. I want to understand computer science and all the maths that goes inside it. I am very interested in maths and know a lot of topics like calculus and vectors. My interest in maths might not match my marks, but still I want to read further and enhance my knowledge of it. I am very interested in higher mathematics and its application. Can you tell me where to begin? So this is a really good email because this person, uh, their name is Good Roger, just finished high school and they have eight months before they go to college for apparently computer science, which I think it's a really good major. You know, I initially was a computer science major before switching to math, and that was a big decision. You know, it's a big decision to switch from a major which I feel has more opportunity to a major that is really beautiful. Mathematics is a beautiful major, but um, there's less job opportunities with mathematics compared to computer science. And I did it just because I love mathematics. Anyways, a couple things about this email. First, he says, my interest in maths might not match my marks, but I still want to read further and enhance my knowledge of it. So let me just start by saying, I think that's, that's a really bold statement and that's really good that uh, he's aware of that, you know? So if you're in a situation where, you know, you feel like you love math, but your, your grades aren't where they need to be, you're not alone, right? You're not alone. And this comment that he has, has in this email just really resonated with me because I've had a lot of students in the past who really, really love mathematics. They just love math. They think it's so cool. They'll watch math YouTube videos. They'll do math on their own. They'll do extra math. And then when it comes time to actually perform, when it comes time to actually like take a test, they won't do so hot. And I think that a lot of that has to do with like self-confidence, with test preparation, and just with mindset, right? You need to be in the right mindset. You need to be mentally ready and you need to be, be prepared for what's in front of you in a testing situation. Anyways, I don't mean to derail, so let's talk about mathematics for computer science. So I have a couple options. Option number one um, would be the book by Epp. There's a discrete math book by Susanna Epp. Uh, app is EPP. App EPP. I'll leave I'll leave the link in the description to the book. I have the book. I don't know where it is, um, but I do have a copy of the app book. I made a video on it long ago. It's been a couple of years. It's probably the easiest book for learning discrete mathematics. And so when you study computer science, you learn a bunch of stuff. You know, you take some programming classes. Um, you take some architecture classes. You learn about databases. Uh, you take operating systems, and you take discrete mathematics. At most colleges, or at least the one I went to, there were two classes on discrete mathematics. I only took the first one, and I did really well, and then I switched my major after that. So discrete math, learn discrete math. That's going to help you. That's very different from calculus and, and vectors. It's good, it's good you know vectors, but it's very, very different. It's a different type of mathematics. I also have a book here on discrete math. It's called Discrete Mathematics in Computer Science. It's got a really fancy cover. Look at that, really cool, right? And it's an older book. I don't know if this book is available today. I don't know if you can find it on the internet. Um, as always, I'll look. After I post this video, I'll look, and if I can find it, I'll post a link in the description. But I don't know, I don't know how easy it is to get. I don't know how expensive it is. Um, I've had this book for a while, so and I probably didn't pay that much for it because I bought it used. But yeah, this book covers discrete mathematics. So, so what is discrete math? Well, let's take a look at this book so you can see exactly what it entails. What an elegant book, right? Discrete Mathematics in Computer Science by Donald Stanat and David McAllister. Really fancy looking book. Let's open it up and take a look and cite it. 1977, wow, it's a long time ago. Printed in the United States of America. To Sylvia and Beth, I wonder who they were. Perhaps a daughter and a wife, perhaps? So here's some of the topics. Mathematical models. 
and mathematical reasoning. Okay, so like logic, right? predicates and quantifiers. So logic is something you always start with, usually, in a discrete math class, and that leads into sets because a lot of the basic proofs that you do in set theory depend on that, on that mathematical logic. Uh, and this is something that you're not used to if you come from just like a regular algebra calculus background. This is often a game changer for students. Discrete math oftentimes um, derails people from studying computer science because it's so tough, it's so different. Binary relations, functions, that's really important. Counting and algorithm analysis, infinite sets. So this might not be something you see in a discrete math class, it will just depend on your teacher, the book, and the school. So not, not something you might see. Same thing with this here, algebras. Uh, you might not see this in your discrete math class, which kind of coincides with the structure of the book. You know, these are the last two chapters, so you probably might not see these. Again, it just depends on the teacher. Appendix, and there's answers to selected exercises. So this is a pretty good book. Um, it's got a cool title, right? Mathematics for Computer Science. Um, it's not like the easiest book to read, but I wouldn't say it's like harder than a lot of the books are being used today. The books that are being used today um, are typically like the books by Rosin or Grimaldi, and I think those books are way more advanced than this book, and they contain way more information. So this is much more a beginner book uh, than those books, in my opinion. Here we have some stuff with functions, and it does have answers, so it's a decent choice for um, you know, doing some self-study. So you do get some answers. Also, the answers appear to be fairly complete, the ones it does have. So it's not just like, you know, here's the answer is two, the answer is three. They actually do go through and you know, give you some proofs or proof sketches in some cases. So very, very convenient. But again, the one by F is the easier choice. So as far as what book to use to learn uh, you know, mathematics for computer science, Try to get the book by Susanna App if you can afford it. If it's available, I'll leave a link in the description. If not, maybe try this one. This one's pretty good. Um, and again, I've had it for a while. Discrete Mathematics in Computer Science. And it really is one of the things I think that oftentimes holds people back from getting a computer science degree. When I took Discrete Mathematics, we started with 300 people in my class. And after the second test, we had maybe half the class, half the class was gone, half the class was gone. I actually did really well in the class. I, I got the highest grade in the entire class. The only reason that that happened is because before I took the class, someone told me that it was really hard. I was a tutor and I remember there was a girl, I don't, I don't remember her name, and she was telling me how hard the class was and how it destroyed people. And so I made it my mission to completely destroy this class before taking it. So when I took the class, I, I just obsessed over it. I just worked on it every day. I made it my life. And at the end, there was a graph online that showed like, you know, the highest grades. And, and I had the highest grade because I studied so much. So try to do that. Try to do that good, Roger. Try to get the highest grade. You can do it. It's really not that bad if you devote the time to it. It really isn't. It really isn't. I was also lucky to have a really good teacher. He was uh, from the Middle East somewhere. He had a really thick accent but he spoke really slowly. And I remember he used like a marker and like a projector, just really hardcore guy, really great teacher. It's a great class. Hopefully you get a good teacher. You'll learn to write proofs. You'll learn about logic, learn about sets. You can learn all kinds of beautiful mathematics in a class like this. Uh, my experience with discrete math was an excellent one and I hope yours is the same. So yeah, discrete math, that's a good place to start for math for computer science. If you're not a subscriber, consider hitting subscribe today. Uh, I want to say thank you to all my Patreon uh, supporters, to all the members here on the channel. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Oh, and if you want to learn mathematics, check out my courses on mathsorcerer.com. Until next time, good luck and take care.